Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fistwunk TV here, aka Lauren 33 I am back here today with your My Hero Academia Chapter 322 official review slash reaction. And man, oh man, I'm so happy I get to discuss this chapter with you guys because it's been a couple weeks since we've covered the manga. And this chapter, there was no way, absolutely no way I was going to miss it because it's a pretty big one. You know, all those months ago, it feels like forever now, you know, when we did the review talking about Deku leaving UA, and you guys went crazy on that video, and it's been, you know, a huge topic of conversation for those who have read the manga for months now, and people have been wondering how long before Deku would return to UA, right? And we know if you guys have been keeping up with the manga the last couple weeks, the story has been, you know, Class 1A, they did find Deku, and they've been trying to convince him to come back, right? And each member of Class 1A has basically given, like, you know, a little bit of how they feel about Deku, what they love about him, and why they want him to come home. And the big thing is, Class 1A, they want to fight by Deku's side. You know, they, they treasure him greatly and they don't want him to walk this path by himself. You know, whatever Deku wants to do, and we all know his goal right now is to stop all friends in Shigaraki, they want to walk that path with him. They want to be, you know, there to help him in battle, right? And it's been very heartwarming, very heart touching to see Class 1A unite like this, especially to bring, you know, you know their strongest uh classmate back home i absolutely love what they've been doing these last couple weeks and this chapter it all comes to a huge conclusion and you guys know i'm a huge fan of bako he's my favorite character from my hero he's one of my favorite anime characters in general and to see what he does in this chapter this is just amazing it, like i'm just gonna say it right now before even getting into the leaks all right this is easily my favorite my hero academia chapter of the year probably is you know so let's get into it enough of me talking let's get into what actually happens in this chapter so if you guys remember right like i said the last couple chapters class 1a has been trying to convince deku to come back to ua and at the end of last chapter we saw that ida right with the help of his classmates he was actually able to finally get a hold of deku we saw at the end of that chapter he was holding deku's hand as both for crying in a very emotional moment and that's where we begin in this week's chapter so deku uh knows right deku says that he knows he should break free of ida's hand but he doesn't even have the strength to do it remember deku's danger sense quirk has not even been going off because he knows that his classmates are not trying to hurt him they're just trying to reach him right they just just want him to listen to them you know and come back home but Deku doesn't even have the strength to do it so you can see how truly fatigued Deku is we've seen it you know in the panels right Deku looks nothing like his normal self he is absolutely on the edge of his limits there's he can't go anymore but he refuses to stop he wants to keep going but he doesn't have the strength to break free of Ida's hand. And then we see Ochako. She deactivates her quirk and they fall from the sky. But, you know, before they hit the ground, Kirishima is there to catch them. He says that some time ago he heard stories about a boy his age that saved the classman from a villain and asks if that was him. So this is kind of going all the way back to the first chapter of My Hero. Remember when Deku still didn't have a quirk yet, right? And, you know, he was saving Bakugo. Remember, that was back when Deku and Bako were still in middle school. So, Ida is impressed that Kirishima was at the right time, at the right place. He then says it was because of Endeavor's orders. Because remember, last chapter, Endeavor told them, you know, let the classmates, let the students handle this. Because remember, Hawks told Endeavor, why don't this... Why don't we just let Best Genus come in and finish the job? You know, but, you know, Endeavor's like, no, let, let his classmates take care of this situation. So, uh, Mina asks Deku to come back to UA for them to all have classes together. He responds saying that he wants to, but he'll just put everyone in danger. We know that Deku has been preaching that basically, you know, for the longest time. The, reason, the main reason why he left UA is because he doesn't want anybody he cares about to get hurt. It's part of the reason why he's put this overwhelming burden on himself. But Bakugo intervenes, and from then, from there on... 
from here on, this is when this chapter becomes goaded. Because this is just, this is the Baku character development for anime people, for anime only people, man. When they get to this point, because this will probably take place in season seven, and we're only in season five right now. Oh, it's going to be glorious. But Baku intervenes and he asks Deku if he remembers what he told him after Shigaraki's attack. I remember it. I've been thinking about it since. Remember, back when Bakugo made that MVP sacrifice, right? When Deku was fighting Shigaraki during the war arc, Bakugo told Deku, you know, you don't try to win this alone. Because Bakugo knows Deku better than anybody. You know, all my, it's similar. But All Might and Deku, they had the tendency to put the burden all on themselves and try to do things alone and not think of others that can help them because, you know, of one for all and the burden and the responsibility they put on their soldiers. Dek Baku's been preaching this to Deku for the longest time and Deku never listens, never listens, you know? Even now, Deku said, you know, he didn't remember when Baku said that. So Baku then proceeds to explain how he feels about Deku and people have been waiting for this stuff for a long time. Baku says that he always thought he was looking down on him and that he was afraid of his potential to go even further than Baku himself, right? So Baku was saying that the reason why he looked down at Deku is because he was afraid of the potential that Deku had to become even stronger and more gifted than Baku could ever be. So Baku was kind of bullying Deku because he didn't want Deku to ever surpass him. He was afraid. So Baku had his own his own fears, and we kind of already knew this. If you guys remember, way back, uh, right before Deku unlocked Float during the war arc, we saw that flashback of a conversation between Baku and All Might when Deku was working on you know Float with Ochako a little bit. So some of this stuff we already knew, but now we're seeing Baku finally say this out loud to Deku. Something we've been waiting for now for for years in the story, and this it's a, it's emotional, it's heart wrenching, but you know I I just love it. I just love this character development for Baku. So. Uh, one of the great things is the panels. The panels change here. So we get to see Baku and Deku where they are now, right? And you can see the, the, the panels of Deku just fatigued. He looks so out of it. Like he can barely pay attention, right? Because he just doesn't have the energy to even keep his eyes open. Baku, as he's explaining himself. And then we see the panel change slowly to them as kids so it goes from them where they are now to them as kids and oh when this gets animated you know the music over it it's going to be absolutely amazing so uh then as after the panel of them changing into their ua uniforms we see for the first time ever bago calls deku Ezekiel. we know that bako has always called you know Midoriya Deku but the first time ever we get to see Baku Baku call Deku by his real name Ziku and this is something we've been waiting for for such a long time I thought personally we would never get this until like the very end of the show but here we are this is such this is this is Baku's character development coming a full 360 he's coming all the way around then Baku lowers his head and says I'm sorry for everything I'm I've done until today so Baku apologizes for all you know the bullying everything he's done you know to Deku over the years right he says that the path Deku, All Might, and the other One for All users chose wasn't wrong by itself, but there's a limit to what they can do by themselves. So, so Baku, remember, Baku understands One for All because he's been there. He knew Deku's secret before Deku shared it with the rest of Class 1A. You know, so he, know, he like I said, if there's anybody that understands Deku, you know, better than All Might, it's Baku. We all know this. So Baku is saying, yes, I understand how powerful One for All is and how special it is and the burden you have on your soldiers. But there's a limit to what you can do with One for All. That's why you need people backing you up. One for All by itself is not enough to get the job done. That's the point that Baku is trying to explain to Deku. It doesn't matter how strong you are, right? 
Because if class one for if class one A didn't come in to say Deku when they did, Baku would have eventually or, or Deku, you know, would have eventually passed out. And that would have left him perfectly vulnerable to be taken by all for one. You know? Cause all for one knew that Deku would keep going and moving ahead no matter how tired he was. So Paco asks him to share his burden with everyone and says that to surpass All Might, all of them had to protect Yue and the civilians together. Winning by saving and saving by winning. That line reminds me so much of Heroes Rising, right? Because remember, you know, when Deku and Paco were fighting Nine, you know, Deku kept saying, you know, you know, saving by winning. And Baku gets saying winning by saving. Or I may have got it mixed up there, but you guys get the point, right? So that remind, that line, winning by saving and saving by winning, reminds me so much of Deku and Baku's mindset going into Heroes Rising. But Baku is basically saying here, right? Stop. Breathe for a second. Share your burden in having to defeat all for one in Shigaraki with all of us. Let's all work together so we can continue growing, right? Not only as students, but as heroes. Let's continue growing that, that we can surpass All Might and all the other pro heroes because we are the future heroes. We are the next generation. So let's work together so that we can defeat Shigaraki and all for one, protect UA, protect our family members, protect protect hero society so that one day we can all smile and live to see a brighter day so i love this so deku is perplexed and he starts feeling regretful because remember last chapter deku said none of them can keep up remember deku said and i quote this is a battle between one for all and all for one you guys can't keep up right but you saw here even though deku was tired right and deku wasn't trying to hurt them Still, Class 1A, they worked together to stop Deku, you know? So, we see Deku is now feeling regretful for what he said about them not being able to keep up. And it looks like Deku was about to apologize to his classmates, but then he passes out. But right as he passes out, Bakugo is there to catch him. So, amazing stuff here from Bakugo. This is just fantastic, right? I can't stop saying good things about, you know, Bakugo's dialogue in this chapter. So a little while later, we see Deku opens his eyes and we see now, you know, they're near UA. So Deku is now finally returning to UA with his classmates, right? So we see that number 13 is with them. We get to see her face for the first time. We also see uh, the UA barrier is now active. So it looks like a giant iron fortress. So we can see that UA is pretty protected by this barrier, right? So they have put in advanced protocols to try to keep you know uh the school safe what could be interesting though if all for one you know or the league of villains come to attack because we know that all for one wants deku we know that's what he wants right how much will that barrier be able to withstand you know i feel like that barrier is going to come into play you know this could be setting up for a battle at ua you know but we'll see uh, so we see some of the other students, they're talking about the defensive capabilities and saying that Deku will be safe no matter what happens. But then we see a bunch of civilians protesting, right? So the protesters are the protesters are saying that they can't let Deku with the UA because he's the boy who Shigaraki, who Shigaraki is going after. We see President Mike tried to control the crowd, but... They continue to talk about how his president puts everyone in danger and that in this case it would be safe for all of them to have stayed home. So we see Deku and Deku's face in these panels, man. He is so tired and so out of it, right? Like, it's almost, you know, you forget what it's like to see Deku smile in the manga. You know, it feels like it's been forever since we've seen a Deku smile. So Deku's face here, if you just look at it, he, he, it looks so sad, so gloomy. So like he's so done with all everything that's happened, right? So we see Deku, he starts walking. So it looks like he's ready to leave again, you know. But then Ochako grabs his hand and says, it's fine. So Ochako says that she can't let this opportunity that Ida, Bako, and the others created be wasted. And we see the chapter end uh, say, who will save heroes when they're in pain? We know that's a famous line. Ochako, Ochako's been thinking about that line for a very, very long time because of a you know past conversations he had with Deku 
and so the chapter ends with otaku's back turn and that's all we get so hopefully next chapter you know now that we've seen bakugo reveal how he truly feels about deku and bako apologize maybe it's otaku turn we've we've known now for a very long time that otaku and deku they have feelings for one another they care one another and we've all predicted that you know probably at the end of the series you know if there was if we were to see you know deku and company as adults otaku and deku would probably be together right they would be a romantic couple probably get married have kids whatever you know Ochako has never, you know, really let loose her true feelings for Deku, even though everybody in Class 1A and everybody watching and reading the show knows that those two have a special connection. You know, will Ochako finally reveal how she truly feels about Deku? Because I feel like we all know that, you know, for Deku to reveal how he feels, Ochako would have to do it first. So hopefully that's what we get because we've gotten basically most of class 1A to reveal how they feel about Deku and how they treasure him greatly. Now it's Ochako's turn. Ochako has tried in the past. Now this is the best time, you know, because you've worked this hard to get Deku back into UA. Now give him the true reason to stay. So I'm hoping next chapter Ochako... Uh, and Deku finally get to have uh, that conversation that we've been waiting for them to have. But either way, that's for next week. But this chapter, oh, amazing chapter. An absolutely amazing chapter. The panels were amazing. You know, Bakugo. This is why Bakugo is golden, in my opinion. This is why he's my favorite character in the show. I'm so happy with the character development he's gotten. This is great to see. You know, and now that Baku has finally made that move, it's going to be interesting to see how Baku goes and acts going forward, right? Will we see a different Baku, right? A more happy Baku, you know, it'll be interesting. But, you know, we've seen Baku finally apologize to Deku for the way he treated him all those years. You know, still, maybe every once in a while, we'll probably get Baku teasing Deku a little bit now, but still... It was just great to see the character development come a full 180. You can make videos on videos about Baku's character development, you know, and how far it's come since the first episode. Baku, in my opinion, has the best character development in the entire show, you know. And Baku, to me, is the main character, even though it is about Deku. But still, you know, great chapter. I absolutely loved it. Loved it, and I'm so happy. So, Deku is back at UA. It's going to be interesting. We'll see what happens with Ochako and Deku, right? That's a conversation that I'm hopeful will take place in the next chapter. Uh, also, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how long will they stay at UA, right? Now that Deku's back at UA, how long before the next attack? It's not like they're just going to be sitting there, you know, forever. Will they come up with some kind of plan to go after the League of Villains? Right? We know that Todoroki wants to work with Endeavor to go find Shoto. But either way, this was fantastic. I loved it. I'm happy that Deku's finally back where he belongs. He should have never left UA to begin with, in my opinion. But I am happy that he is back home. And this was a great chapter. So, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. What is your predictions for My Hero Academia Chapter 323? I will, of course, be here next week to cover it like I usually do. Man, but either way, let me know what you guys thought of the chapter. It, it was great in my opinion. Now, give me your opinion. But... Uh, other than that guys i'll see you guys later if you guys enjoyed leave a like on the video subscribe if you guys are new to the channel by hitting the bell next to my name fitzwong tv so you guys are notified every time i post a new video i'm gonna get out of here you guys stay safe and healthy y'all peace